Hello, everybody, and welcome again to another episode of The Risk Matrix with myself, Dr. Martin, and my friend and colleague, Mr. James Junkin. Good to be here. It's warm. It's conference season. Lots going on, Dr. Martin. You know, uh, normally we have a sponsor for our episodes that are powered by Veriforce, and in this episode, we are sp- sponsored by the Veriforce Select Client Series event, which is happening in New Orleans, Louisiana, May 15th and 16th. Great times in May. The weather's warm. The crawfish are boiling. It's it's always good to be in the city of New Orleans. Always good to improve as a safety professional or procurement professional. So we want to invite everybody out May 15th and 16th to the Veriforce Select client series event that's going to be held at the Higgins Hotel. I'll be there. A lot of our strategic advisory board members will be there. A lot of inciting guests. The Risk Matrix will be live on May 16th with special guest Brett Kettlecamp uh, from Ogletree and Deacons who will be talking about uh, how to successfully navigate the risk associated with information security and cybersecurity. So we want you to come out. We want you to be with us. How can I get there? Veriforce.com forward slash NOLA dash client dash series. Veriforce.com slash NOLA dash client dash series. Go in there, register, come out. A good time will be had by all. There's no cost for the conference. Zero cost for the conference. Uh, There's cost if you want to spend the night in a hotel or whatever and enjoy the city, but no conference fees. An exciting slate of speakers will be there. Uh, So I think it's worth your time and and effort to come and enjoy the city, visit the World War II Museum, and improve yourself uh, professionally. Right on. Right on. And if you have any trouble getting to that link, um, I think you can probably just call up Veriforce's customer service, and they can direct you to the the conference sign-up. So they'll be join, if you follow if you there. follow us, you follow Veriforce on LinkedIn. Uh, there's a lot of this that's coming out in the coming days, promotional items. Just look for that uh and, and click on the banner and they'll give you more information about the event and how to sign up. But May 15th and 16th. Join us there. All right, James. Another episode of the Risk Matrix. Woo-ha! Um, today uh we're gonna discuss one of the checkpoint articles. Uh, from the uh, Professional Safety Journal, which, by the way, James is the, uh, for a little while longer anyways, the Editorial Review review Board Chair. Um, I think this is a really interesting article, Delivering Feedback as a Safety Manager. And, um, you know, this is something that we talk a lot about in in academia, in, you know, professional circles. Um, Feedback can help it can also hurt, okay? Delivery is everything, so, okay? And- uh, you know, I think this goes along with our, our episode where we talked about just culture versus, you know, an effective disciplinary program, So that which is something OSHA expects. And uh, this article actually appeared in the February 2024 um uh, issue of Professional Safety Journal. It's a checkpoint article. And the, the cover sheet is the model for classifying potential SIFs. That's the peer-reviewed article, the cover article for that. And uh, over in the back is something, is a checkpoints article entitled 10 Methods for Delivering Feedback as a Safety Manager. And I thought this article was really interesting. I'd like to talk about this article because it goes right along with our just culture and discipline. As a safety manager, you're delivering culture. feedback, right? As part of that disciplinary process, or you're coaching your operations leadership to deliver this feedback. So they offered 10 steps. I thought it was pretty good. It came from a blog on ASSP, but let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So so let me let me just start with this, right? Because I, I'm looking at these 10 things and um I just want to preface this all with feedback is not always what comes out of your mouth. Okay. Feedback is not just the verbal 
uh, or the written or the 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 knowledge that you impart. It it is in large part also how that knowledge is imparted and how the conversation is approached to give the feedback, right? So it's not just about what is given or what is received. It's about approach too. So that, that brings us to number one, right? Building relationships. First. Building relationships. And they quoted former uh, ASSP president, Bill Giles. And I always like to listen to Bill. He's very practical. Got a lot of boots on the ground experience. He, he said this, are you more likely to listen to a stranger or someone whose opinion you value? Okay. I know from experience, because I'm hard-headed, that I've had to be coached up over my career, right? And at times, I, I tend to listen to people that I respect, people that have interests in me and my career and in, in, in being a better person, being a better father, being a better husband, being a better safety professional. And because they, they care about my success. So as, as safety professionals, you got to build relationships, right? Within your organization. And that's hard, Dr. Martin, today, because more and more is demanded of safety professionals to be tied to a computer. Tied to a computer and not get out of the office, right? Now that, that's, that's one complaint that, that we see a lot. Um, you and I talked about this before we got in the air. And, and I mean, building relationships, um, believe it or not, for some of the listeners, right, is something that I tend to think I excel at. And 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 there's a quote, there's a quote in here that that is very much me, right? Ask instead of tell. Okay. The first thing that you have to know if you want to build a relationship and it's worked for me time and time again is be humble, right? What you learn in a book is not what you see in the field, right? Sometimes your blue collar beginnings, which which both you and I very much have in our background, helps a lot in trying to understand why people do something and being curious first instead of um, trying to critique somebody and how they're doing their job that they've been doing for 20 or 30 years, right? So be curious, be curious, not only about the job, be curious about the person, right? That's, that's building a relationship. People don't trust you unless you have a vested interest in learning what they're doing, why they're doing it, and why they're willing to take the risks that they're willing to take. And, and I think that's a good segue into the second point, which is give your intention some attention. Why are you giving this feedback to begin with? Is it because you're mean and jerk and you have a bad day and, you know, you, you kicked your dog on the way out the door and your, your football team lost or whatever, and it's affecting you at work. And so you came and took it out on your subordinates or your staff or people in the field. Why do you feel the need to share this criticism at this time? Right. There are some so, things that need attention in the immediacy. Like, I need to provide feedback right now. If not, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or you need to sh stop the job and ask a question, right? Absolutely. Because, because a lot of time, your intention is to learn why somebody's doing what they're doing because you don't understand yourself the risk, right? Because a lot of times I don't understand the risk with things that I don't do every day. And when explained to me, I'm willing to, to, to work with that person on the feedback that I give. I don't automatically just give feedback. Oh my God, stop the job. I, I, I think somebody's going to die. I want to stop the job and I want to understand, right? Which leads to the third thing to assess your bias, right? My bias is academia, right? I teach. I, I've learned a lot from books, right? But books aren't always right. I hate to tell you this, fellas and, and gals that have done a lot of, uh, you know, their master's degree, their their doctorate, their, their undergraduate, uh, OTI classes, all these things, right? Everything you read in books is not always true and it's not always feasible, right? So right. assess your bias. 
while while you're giving some intention to what your attention is being focused on. Be careful of your assumptions. Be careful of your assumptions. You know, many times I think on the other side of this coin, safety professionals sometimes avoid giving feedback that's needed because they assume they're not coming from a solid base of actually having performed that task and they're going to look silly. They're going to be made fun of. They're going to be the butt of the joke. They're going to end up in some Facebook post where, you know, got a picture of my safety guy with his book and, you know, I don't know how to do your job. My book's yeah. telling is telling big, me you're doing it wrong. A big right? arrow pointing to Dr. Martin, right? Right, right. So, you know, I don't want to become famous and go viral and be the meme of safety for 2024. And we avoid the conversation. So biases work both ways. And most of the time we're, we're I hate to use the word ignorant, right? Because nowadays people think ignorant is 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 a charged word and it's an insulting word it just means that i don't have a lot of knowledge in that james would like to know a lot about quantum physics but james is ignorant of that right so yeah. but it, but james can be curious right and and i think that there's a big difference between ignorant and curious right and how you come across to your workers right example um, I was a safety director in the crane industry before coming to that. Uh, all I knew was book learning, right? So I did a lot of learning and a lot of um, just falling back on, I, I don't know. I don't know. It looks unsafe to me. That doesn't mean it's unsafe. You guys do this all the time. Explain it to me. Explain it to me. I have humility and I can learn and I want to learn because I want to be the best that I can be for you right? The best advocate I can be for you. And I can't do that unless you teach me. Absolutely. And, you know, we don't know what we don't know a lot of times. So that gets back to building that trust. That trust comes from that relationship that you have. I trust that you care that I'm going home safe. I trust that you're interested in me as a person, I trust that you're coming from a position of knowledge and ability, and you're honestly trying to help me help myself and help my team, right? So I think sometimes, you know, when we talk about psychological safety, we always focus on the worker, right? We talk about the worker and the ability to speak up and things of that nature. But I think sometimes as safety professionals, we need to take a look at ourselves, and say, have I created in myself the ability to bring issues to the table? And many times what I've seen, particularly in field safety, is this. It ain't worth the hassle. I saw a crew one time. They didn't know I was in safety. I was there doing something else in a plant, right? And I saw these safety guys come down through there. And they had uh, uh, one rule in this plant, 100% tile. 100% tile 100% of the time, right? They go down to this crew and they see these guys working, but they're not tied off. And I know they saw them because they looked up. When they looked up, I looked up and I saw them. They turned around and walked away. They turned around and walked away. So we talk about the worker having the feeling safe to stop the job. What about the situation, organizational culture, where if the safety people don't even feel safe stopping the job, right? Or correcting people. Or so I'll say number one, up. number one, there's no relationship built there. There's right? no relationship. But in fact, the because relationship's so poor, you might as well not even had them out there. They, right. they, were, they were useless, really. They probably could have filled out a decent incident investigation report of, of what got injured. Uh, but... But, you know, I wonder about that trust factor. What had eroded that trust factor uh, to the point where they were willing to turn around and just walk away? I'm going to go be in some other place because I don't want to deal with this right now. I don't see it. I can't say something, right? I don't see it. I can't say something. Well, I was there, so I said something. Yeah. So but, which was interesting, but that's a story for the whole whole nother, whole another session, right? Right. 
So the other thing I think we do, and it's hard for, for folks like me and you, it's really hard, is being clear and being specific, which is number four from this article. And they said this, and it struck home with me. It said, managers tend to talk. Managers often say too much, especially when they are nervous. Right? You beat around the bush. How are your kids? You know, and people can tell when you when you ask about these things, what'd you do this weekend? When it's just a formality, it's something they're saying. They don't care what you did this weekend. They don't care about your kids. They don't care about you, right? So what it, it comes out, I think, when you're doing one-on-ones. So a lot of times people beat around the bush before getting to the issue. Let's just get to the issue. What's the issue, man? Now, if yeah. you care about my kids and we got a personal relationship, you be sure to bring and it up. And it's not an imminent danger or imminent hazard, then then of course let's have a chit chat, right? Because that's back to relationship building. But I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you um all of these things for me, and I'm just saying from my own personal perspective, all of these things blur together, right? Right. Because because if you cultivate each of these things, and, I, and I'm saying to this to young professionals or people who have have um, a hard time giving feedback or or integrating themselves into the workforce such that they're not the big bad safety guy and put on your hard hat because so-and-so is coming and that kind of stuff. If, if you want to cultivate these skills, eventually they all must become one grasshopper. Right. They all I must become that. one. We're specific here, right? These these are elements, but but the finesse comes when you can build all of these into one specific practice, right? Because I was going to say to you, be clear and specific and avoid getting personal, right? It's counterintuitive to saying build a relationship, right? So you have to make sure that avoid getting personal is not, you're not trying to build the I relationship. Think we, get pers- we get personal in our relationship building, but when we're coaching, let's get it has to, to be, point. This is just what it is, right? This is just, just what, what it is. is. You know, this is what did what I observe? Says. What's the issue? What you want me to see the, you, the, the corrective action? What is it you wanted me to do? And how give, they can take care of it in the future? I saw you and give me off. some you feedback. Need to be tied off in the future. You need to be make sure that your fall protection plan is implemented. Right. But I also want to see feedback. I want to see feedback from them too, right? Because a lot of times what we observe, clear and specific, right? Um, What we want to see, clear and specific, and what we want addressed is counterintuitive to how the job must be done, right? Could be. And and so we have to be open also in that same moment um, to, to not not making it about, I know what I'm talking about and you don't, right? Which is a personal thing. Or you know what you're talking about and I don't. But we have to be humble enough on both sides in order to come to some agreement of what the right thing to do is. Because a lot of times, workers are making choices in most instances. Not the bad apple, not the person we're talking about that doesn't care. Workers are making choices in the interest of getting the job done for the betterment of the company, even oftentimes putting themselves at risk. So when we're sitting down and coaching and we're talking about being clear and specific, I want to hear why you did what you did. What motivated you to do this? Man, we need to get this done. And everybody left the fall protection at the shop. Again, are you the final garnish to a lethal brew that's been long in the cooking? Or are you the main ingredient? Right? And, we need and there to has to be a there. distinction. There has to be a distinction. There has to be a distinction. And I like what it says. Managers often say too much, especially when they're nervous. Let's get right. to the point. Right? Right. And I will say this about this. I'm the kind of, uh, of supervisor, manager. I've, I've been the president of something since I was 28 years old. I'm 52 now. Yep. I made a lot of mistakes, learned a lot of things. You're an old guy. Between there, right? That's why all this hair is white. Employees, man. Right? <laughs> so the one thing I would say 
that I've learned over the over the career is once we've dealt with this issue, I'm done with it. Yep. I'm not going to keep on. coming back to it. Dr. Martin, last week, you remember when I saw you and you wasn't tied off? You know, we, we've already talked about this. We've settled this. Let's leave it alone. Let's leave right. the dogs lie. Don't just keep coming back to it. Because right. then we get into number five, which is we're getting personal. Right? Right. It comes less as coaching. Now it's attacking people. So right. when you're giving feedback, you know, I think you need to think about the words you're going to use. Now's not the time to ad lib. And they offer a good example in this article. You always have the same bad attitude. He said, avoid using adjectives and stick to nouns and verbs to eliminate the slippery slope. You know? Subjective evaluations that are based on feelings offer no benefit to, to anyone. That's feelings involved. like frustration, right? And I'm and I'm guilty of this, right? I came out I came out the other day in a confined space uh, entry um, right after we had done confined space training, and um, I'm I'm going to be quite frank. I lost my mind, and I wasn't very kind, right? And and so you know there that go that winds us back into six guys just trying to move us along right maintain professional integrity my professional integrity was took a hit that day right hey i've done it really, i've done it, it i've personal. done it and i don't mean to do it but it's the but way we were raised it's the way we were coached the old school if you will and i'm guilty of walking out and telling people y'all are dumber than a box of hair now, if I have a good relationship, sometimes that's funny. If we don't yeah. have a good relationship, that's offensive. I'll never and forget. Now we, now we have crossed and I've lost professional integrity and I'm attacking people. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm coming with my biases and all these things that destroy this coaching opportunity because we forget the coaching opportunity here is not to insult the people. It's not to berate the people. It's to make sure work is done safe. And right? behaviors change and thoughts change and, and, and methods change. I mean, some okay. people, like, like one of the things they put in here, taking an aggressive discipline first approach to noncompliance. Again, it just depends. I'm going I'm to say that. You know what I love you when you say that, James? Oh, say it again. It just... Yes. The D word depends, yeah. right? Depends. So I'm not going to say... I'm going to take out the aggressive part because aggressive should never be part of any type of feedback. You know, if I get aggressive, I make emotional decisions, which always have been bad decisions in my life. Every time I get emotional, I make bad decisions. That creates the other person getting emotional. And then they make bad decisions. And you know what we now? We don't have coaching. We have confrontation, right? That's right. So That's let's right. get the, let's get the, uh, from this article, let's get the aggressive out of it and just talk about the discipline. Yeah. It just depends. Sometimes we need discipline. That's a whole number of episodes. So if you didn't listen to the, if you're listening to this episode, and you didn't listen to the episode last week, go back and go listen back. to that episode where we talk about uh, talk about uh, just culture and discipline and how that can work together, right? How that yeah. works together. But I think what the author's getting here into this article is taking an exclusively negative approach to sharing feedback with workers. Right. In other right. words, don't be a jerk. Don't be a jerk. Don't be a jerk. And you know what? I've been a jerk sometimes. But, I have to. But sorry, and, and I try to do better. You know, where I get to be a jerk many times is when I've got a lot of things going on. Yep. And, you know, I've got instant investigations happening. I got training. I got to deliver. I've got some speaking engagement. I got to prepare for, 
I've got uh, an analysis that's due to some council someplace. And then I've got to stop all that and go deal with this situation. And I, what I have to challenge my situ myself to do is we're not dealing with situation. We're dealing with a person, a human right. being that's a valuable member of my team. That's why we hired them. So you got to take a deep breath, reset, and realize I can't, because I had a bad day, come home and kick the dog. It's not yep. the dog's fault yeah. because I've got a lot of things going on. Doesn't mean I need to take it out on my staff. Somebody else. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Let's move on to number seven. All right. Try the situation behavior impact method. So this was developed by the center for creative leadership. The situation behavior impact method follows a simple three-step format. Describe the situation that occurred. Describe the absorbable behavior actions. Describe the impact or result of behavior. Then ask the worker about their intent rather than making assumptions. Isn't that what we've been saying? I, I, I think we already covered that in, in one through one through six, right? Okay. Um, and again, this all goes back to relationship building, right? And being humble, being clear and specific, avoiding getting personal, assessing your bias, and, and being open to a give and take in, in the conversation, right? Um, because... You're gonna you're gonna say what you saw. They're gonna tell you why. You're gonna you're gonna share some feedback between you, and you're gonna come to a conclusion on how you're gonna change what you saw could have been an a, an unintentional outcome or an outcome that was undesirable. I think that's pretty straightforward. Absolutely. Next is try the Pendleton method, a five step process for constructive conversation. Ask for. Uh, input by saying, in your opinion, what went well? Share feedback around strengths. If you agree with the team member's assessment, let them know. All right? Then what could be improved upon next time? And give them time to respond. And don't skip this step. How do we get better? And then feedback on what could have been done differently. We use this method in the military. Right? Yep. And and it's amazing. I, I, I've 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 had this conversation for this fourth time today. I've talked about commander's intent. Commander's intent. You have to define what you want done, not necessarily how you want it done. That's best done by the people who do the job every day, right? And then you've got these barriers, these guardrails that keep them in their lane. And at the end, that's where we have coaching opportunities going through this. What, what went right? What went, what could we do better? Be specific. Let me know. And then I take my years of experience with some of my safety teams, limited years of experience, and we coach them on how it could have been done better. And we yeah. get an action. We agree upon an action of what we would have done differently. And this, this is also used in a lot of emergency response circles, right? When they do tabletop exercises before and after incidents, and they continue use the continuous improvement model to, to make sure that the next time there's something that changes that improves what's going on. Now, Number nine. I oh. love this one. Avoid the sandwich method. Say something good. Say something good. Put the bad in the middle. And say then something, something good. good on the end. That that's that is the educator's model, right? They they tell you to use the sandwich method. Honestly, I think we're all a little savvy once we get into the workplace. Most of us, right, that we know the sandwich method is coming, and and um, you know I would rather have somebody uh, be uh, very intentional about, about what they say to me. If it's not going to be a chit chat situation, I want to know what the feedback is and I want to be able to discuss it. And I don't want you to sugarcoat anything. I think right? it confuses you know people. It confuses me when it's done to me. You told me I'm a great guy and I'm an extremely good member of our team and you appreciate all my hard work and but, working late, but you know, you need to do this. And then on the backside, you it, the the butt can get lost in all this flowery language to where I'm thinking, well, maybe that wasn't a big deal. Yeah, right, right. You know, why are we even having this conversation? 
So yeah. sandwich methods out. If you're using the sandwich method, you're confusing your team. Get directly to the point. Get to the point of why we're having this coaching. And right. really, number 10 is one that is really about leadership. Empowering others. What is my job as a leader? My job as a leader is to empower others, take the knowledge, skills, and abilities that I have, the experience I have, and empower others to learn from that. Right. While at the same time, keeping people in the guardrails and keeping people safe, right? Right. Um, it says- This is a good article. I mean- a it, great article, great article. But, but I will say, James, that, that, that the finesse comes when you start using a lot of these methods at the same time. OK, absolutely. And it and it's not intuitive. Not everybody has the personal skills right off the bat, right out of school, um, you know, even 10, 15 years out of school. This is something you have to work on every day. Right. It's something I have to work on. Every I day. have to work on. Every you know day. what works for me? Humility. Right. Be humble. Know that you don't know it all. Right. Give credit where credit is due, because a lot of times people who do the tasks every day know a lot more than you do about what you've learned in your book, right? And you can learn some really valuable things from them. And and you give that credit and you empower people and in turn, they empower you back. You know, my mother said it best. Because I was hard headed. I was tough coming up, right? And she said, are you listening to what they say, are you listening to respond? Right? Because I used to argue about everything. And a lot of people yep. say I still do, right? I like a good debate. But when we're coaching our team, are we listening to what they say to make them better? Or are we listening to respond with a bunch of yeah, buts, yeah, buts, yeah, buts? Yep. So, Try to be empathetic. Try to be empathetic. A lot of times the safety profession, particularly those of us that are later in our career, we've forgotten what it's like to be boots on the ground safety. You know, that's why we got all these theories and stuff in our head and it sounds great. We're so far removed from the realities of the workplace. So empathetic listening is key to diagnosing a situation from that person's perspective, mm -hmm. right? Why did they do what they did? Listen. So I think this has been a great article. I'm glad we discussed it. It's kind of on the backside of our first conversation about combining just culture with discipline, right? Because the two exist in, in the so real if you world. Listen to this, go listen to that and then come so, back and listen to this come again. Come back and, and, Today, we've been going back through Professional Safety Journal's February 2024 issues, checkpoints, articles on 10 methods for delivering feedback as a safety manager. Hope you enjoyed the discussion. Always uh, uh, I'll appreciate those folks that come and listen to us and, and participate. Hit that like button. Smash that subscribe button. Listen to us. Every Tuesday comes out, there comes out a new version of our podcast video cast it is on linkedin it is on Vera forces youtube it is on spotify you can get alerts on your phone if you do that subscription service we want to hear from you we want you to tell us we're wrong we're right um maybe it just depends i love it when you say that and uh let's just let's just continue the discussion and remember Vera Force is having that client select series uh event down in nola so if you're interested in that, um, boot up that page and uh, it's free to go ahead and do that. It might cost you for the hotel and everything else. But to hear those speakers for free, just know that James and I will be there doing a live session of the Risk Matrix. So thanks again for listening. Uh, James, take us out. Remember, people want feedback from work. That's what we're doing today. Give your people feedback because that helps get workers home safe from high hazard jobs. And y'all keep doing that.